everyone. Today I'm talking about mathematics interventions in schools. Mathematics interventions are programs, strategies or initiatives currently implemented or could be implemented by schools, education sectors and systems in order to improve student outcomes in numeracy. They may be used with students who are experiencing difficulties in maths or for all students in a whole class. These interventions may be commercially produced products that schools must buy or are programs produced by the state government for implement implementation by schools. This presentation will focus on two particular mathematics interventions that have been designed for implementation in kindergarten, year one and year two classrooms. Those programs are Count Me In Two and Best Start targeted early numeracy. This presentation will also centre on outlining the structure of the programs, how they've been designed to be implemented and discuss possible positives and negatives of using them in schools. Also, I will briefly talk about the relevance of these programs within our school setting. In the 1990s, a pilot program called Count Me In was trialled in 13 schools in New South Wales. It was based on the work of Bob Wright, a researcher at Southern Cross University. Wright found that children learn maths concepts in a hierarchical way, and this thus can be assessed and tracked. He later developed the Learning Framework in Number, a research-based framework for the assessment and teaching of number in the early years of school. Counting In was mainly a mathematics support program where individual children worked one-to-one -one with a specially trained teacher. Due to the perceived effectiveness of the program, it was later extended into a whole class program and called Count Me In Two. This program has been rolled out across schools in New South Wales by the state government. Specialist teachers and mathematics consultants went around to schools and were involved in providing professional development for classroom teachers so that they could be effective in implementing the program. This was crucial to the program because the increase in teachers' pedagogical content knowledge meant that the program could be continued when the specialist teachers were no longer providing support in schools. The main aim of Count Me In Two is to help teachers gain a better understanding of students' mathematical strategies. That is, what strategies and understandings do students use to solve number problems? How can these be identified and placed in a kind of classification system? Students develop their own understanding of number systems and operations on number. Rote learning and learning of mathematical concepts does not lead to effective learning of mathematical concepts that can be applied successfully in new situations. As students learn, they modify or reconstruct their current strategies. The child's progress in constructing arithmetical knowledge can be thought of in terms of a progression or advancement. Children reconstruct or modify their current strategies when they gain experience with mathematical concepts. Therefore, there is an apparent progression in their mathematical learning. There are four progressions of early arithmetical counting that children demonstrate. Emergent, perceptual, figurative, and counting on and back. Count Me In Two can be implemented in schools by providing activities that are targeted at that child's level of competence. The program begins with teachers becoming familiar with the learning framework in number. Then they give each student a specifically designed individual numeracy assessment called the Schedule for Early Number Assessment, or SENA. The data from the centre is used to find out which strategies the students are using when performing number tasks. The teachers then use the information from the centres to plan number lessons. The New South Wales government produced resource, resource books, such as the Developing Efficient Numeracy Strategy, or DENS Stage 1 book. This DENS book contains many numeracy activities that can be used with groups of students who are at the same level along the learning framework in number. As I just mentioned, assessment is an integral part of the Count Me In Two program. The centre is given to the students before starting the intervention and periodically through its implementation. 
Here is an example of the types of number questions that are used in the Senna test. Number identification, forward word number sequence, and backward word number sequence. The teacher conducts the assessment one-to-one -one with each student and notes what strategies the child is using when thinking and solving number tasks. Well, let's talk about the positive aspects of this mathematical intervention, count me in two. It is a comprehensive number program that can help to identify how students think about numbers and what strategies they use in problem solving. The centre testing allows teachers to track the progress of their students using the learning framework in number. Also, teachers can plan and design activities that are appropriate for their students' current level of knowledge. When the program is implemented across kindergarten to year two, the teachers work collegially, discussing mathematics, planning, sharing ideas, and also resources. All of this helps to build teacher capacity in, math in mathematics. On the other hand, the program may not be as effective as it appears. There is research that says that students should not work in same ability grouping during mathematics instruction. It has been found that from a very young age, children identify themselves as either successful or unsuccessful at maths. A professor of mathematics education at Stanford University, Joe Bowler, describes this as having either a fixed or growth mathematical mindset. A fixed mindset in maths can persist in students for years or even into adulthood. Perhaps count me in two, is indirectly labelling students and so discouraging the development of their growth mindset. That brings me to the second of the mathematical interventions that I would like to discuss today, the Targeted Early Numeracy or TEN program. <laughs> the Targeted Early Numeracy TEN intervention program was initiated by the New South Wales State Government to provide support for students experiencing considerable difficulty in learning numeracy in the first years of schooling. In 2009, there was a pilot of the TEN program and it has continued to increase as part of the group of programs operating under the Best Start initiative. The aim of the TEN program is to provide support for those students in kindergarten to year two to improve their capacity with number and to reduce the risk of them scoring in the lowest bands on the National Assessment Program, Literacy and Numeracy, NAPLAN, in Year 3. Originally in the pilot program, specialist teachers, TEN facilitators, collected data about the progress of students from, from schools. The program was seen as a successful intervention because the data showed a reduction in the number of students at risk in mathematics. The TEN program is recommended to be implemented in classes as part of the usual numeracy program. The program consists of all students in the class engaging in short 10-minute activities designed around one aspect of early arithmetic strategies. The maths activities are undertaken on a daily basis. The students are placed in small groups of three to four and the teacher instructs them in short, focused, frequent numeracy sessions within the classrooms. Typically, the students are not withdrawn for the activities. Therefore, there is explicit and structured instruction in maths for all students. The TEN program has assigned minimum grade level based performance targets for all students. For example, by the end of kindergarten, students are expected to use perceptual counting, year one figurative counting, and year two, counting on and back. Teachers assess students every five weeks to track whether they, their, their progress has been achieved. Targeted Early Numeracy, 10, is a program that is designed to bring students to a benchmark in maths that is mandated by the government. The idea being that the students are always doing daily maths activities and the teacher is focused on where the students should be on their learning progressions. The program is data-driven and maths is seen as a subject that should be taught only to reach certain benchmarks. 
Like Company 2, can this type of instruction be seen as effective in developing a growth mindset? This kind of mathematical intervention is developed from the idea that mathematical concepts can be taught through repeated, almost drill-type instruction. From a class management point of view, the teacher's focus is only on, a, on small groups, whilst the other students do other maths activities. It is questionable whether this allows the teacher time to address the needs of all the students. Ten minutes is a very short time for students to engage with mathematical activities. It's been shown that students are increasingly given less think time in class, and ten activities may actually be an ineffective form of instruction particularly for those students who require support. There is research to suggest that students don't gain a deeper understanding of working mathematically using this form of teaching. At our school many years ago, staff were in service by maths consultants on Count Me In Two. Center assessments were used to place students on the learning framework and to track their progress. Vertical maths groupings were formed on the basis of these assessments and students were given instruction using the DENS activities with differentiation as required. This model has been retained and students in kindergarten to year two are moved according to their performance on centre tests. It can be demonstrated that this systematic instruction has led to building of student capabilities in number. It has also been found that when teachers have a deep understanding of the learning progressions in maths, they are better able to select and use activities that foster learning. Teachers work together collegially discussing mathematics and student progressions and share planning and resources. However, it is the case that with staff changes at our school over the years, there hasn't been the opportunity for everyone to undergo as much training and so it can be said there isn't the same level of pedagogical content knowledge. It is important that our focus is always on building capacity in teachers because research suggests that it is cru a crucial aspect to effective teaching and learning in maths. Also, assessment needs careful planning so that there is not an over-reliance on centre data and teachers use their own formative assessment in class and judge the progression of their own students. It may be very surprising for you to hear that there is not good evidence to suggest that count me in two or ten are cost-effective mathematical interventions. This doesn't necessarily mean the interventions are ineffective per se, but it is a fact that allocation of funding in schools to all programs is a major consideration. What we have done well at our school is use a variety of assessment tasks, mathematical activities and planning structures to tailor our programs directly to the needs of our students. To finish, I'd like to focus on why we should care about mathematics education. This is Terence Cow and Marion Merzikani, both recipients of a prestigious award, the Fields Medal in Mathematics. Their love of maths, talent, education and hard work led them to making major contributions in mathematics. This is also Professor Jo Bowler, who, by building on the work of Professor Carol Dweck, is the architect of teaching growth mindsets in mathematics. Her message to us all is that ability is malleable, not fixed from birth, and that students need to be supported to, to, develop, to develop productive growth mindsets in mathematics. Thank you.